uh, one of the big problems of uh, uh, government these days is the, the gerrymandering. And so you have these districts that are very deeply Democrat or very deeply Republican. Um, and what that means is that you have, you end up with representatives who disagree with each other about everything. Um, and and, and the, there's a plenty of blame to go around because when the, the Republicans are in charge, they gerrymander it to minimize the number of repre Democratic representatives. Uh, but Democrats do the same thing when they're in charge. Um, is there a way to fix that? You bet there is. But it has to be state by state, and it has to be done by courageous individuals who are willing to buck their own parties and create fair districts. As I mentioned, my, my district, it looks like some kind of deformed starfish. Um, and there, there's a district down near Philadelphia that looks like a, a Rorschach ink block test. <laughs> Crazy. Um, but it can be fixed if the will is there. They did it in California. Yes. And, and they did it despite the opposition of Democratic leadership. Democratic Party leadership didn't want, they were afraid of what would have happened. In the end, actually, the Democrats picked up a couple of seats. Um, but I, I think uh, Americans are tired of the food fighting that goes on. Um, and uh, I think that's part of it. The too much cable news is another problem. Oh, yeah. uh, but the other, men the other question you, you raised, Peter, was uh, money. Uh, PACs, super PACs, lobbyists. Um, Will you support reforms such as those embodied in the American Anti-Corruption Act to limit the influence of all, all this money in politics? Yes. Of course. Of course I would. Uh, it's, it's terrible. Uh, and what it means is that members of Congress have to spend an inordinate amount of time raising money so that they get reelected. Um, and it's an insidious problem because uh, you can't depend on the people that are in office to change the rules because those are the rules that got them elected and keep them elected. Uh, and, and why would they want to change the rules to make it easier for outsiders to challenge them for their elected seats? Uh, I'm in favor of changing those rules. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not doing this job to make a living. I, I, I worked for 25 years as a lawyer, and I, I'm doing this job to help people because I consider it an honor to do it. But it's a tall order, getting the, getting the money out of politics. Uh, I, was, uh, I was disappointed in the presidential election more than any other reason. Uh, uh, because uh, it means our chances of overturning Citizens United have gone way, way down. And Citizens United is the Supreme Court of, of the United States decision that said uh, the First Amendment requires that you, uh, uh, you can't limit the amount of money in politics because money equals speech, and that includes uh, corporate speech because corporations are people, my friend. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, as I said, you can't. I don't think we're going to be able to depend on the Congress to change these rules. The only thing that I think would really work would be if we got a better Supreme Court that then would overrule Citizens United, and, and because of a recognition that this money in politics is wrecking our democracy, because money talks too loud in Washington. And so, for example, and, and let me give you a concrete example of that. Um, the environmental laws, the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, they protect all of us. I don't use the word regulations, by the way. I talk about protections. And the, and the, uh, the Environmental Protection Agency is full of protections, and they, they enact protections. and it, uh, did you know that the Clean Water Act and the Clean Air Act do not apply to the oil industry or the gas industry? Why? They are exempt. 
They are exempt. Oil and gas are exempt from the environmental laws that every other industry has to comply with. Now why is that? Is it because we're not worried about oil pollution or gas pollution? No. Uh, it's because they can do it. They have the money to lobby and buy and sell legislation. And that what that is what you get. That is the, the pernicious influence of all this money in politics. That's just one example, and there's a lot more. So it's something that I, you kind of push my button there. <laughs> that's, that's something I feel very strongly about. What's the plan to actually stop it? To get rid of the I don't know. It's not uh, obvious. obvious. Yeah, it is. No more lobbies. Yeah. Well, no. yeah. Exactly. The only way we can do it, I, in my view, is to is to uh, to get a better Supreme Court. And it didn't happen this time, but my uh, hope is eventually it will. Yeah, it might might not be in our lifetimes. You're right.